So we're going to talk about a key part of, of uh, this process, uh, Six Sigma Lean value stream mapping. And uh, it touches on a lot of the, the things that, that you no doubt are working on, some of the principles that we've identified. But let's think about uh, how an organization is, is set up. You've got your uh, CEO and uh, the CEO, he says, I want some software. And then he, he, he involves the, the, the managers, the higher ups, and, and, and these managers, they all uh, have groups under them, different tools, different software. And you're brought in and, and the, you know you, you're probably talking to the CEO, you're probably talking to those managers, and they're gonna tell you all the problems, all the things that, that they're facing and, and what they want the software to do or what they want it to do better. Uh, and so that's how we usually work. But the fact of the matter is that most of the work is done by these groups and, they're, and they, it moves through through the organization, there's there are these processes that that each of these these groups are have a view of. So this this manager he knows what's what his group is responsible for. He knows the the inefficiencies. He he knows how he's measuring the metrics, and maybe he's he's aware of of how one group affects his work and how what he. Is responsible for in, in the next group so it has you have a, a little view but it's hard to piece together that that whole picture and that's that's really where value stream mapping comes in so this is an, a value stream map it, it's not very pretty but uh, what it what it is is a flowchart method to illustrate analyze and improve the steps required uh, required to deliver a product or a service so it's an internal process, and you go through and you, you if we're thinking about maybe a, a factory floor, uh, there, there are these uh, steps that have to be taken, and you're mapping out the whole step, the whole process. But let's talk first about what this isn't. Let's compare a value stream map and a, and a journey map. I keep having to look back because my screen is so tiny. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, a value stream map is focusing on three things, information, materials, and time. And it's only really useful for cyclical, repeatable processes uh, that are internal and something that's delivering something to, an, to a customer. And as Hiromi was bringing out, the customer could be the next part of, a, of an internal uh, an internal process. So we've talked a little bit about journey mapping. And again, user journey mapping is a, a UX tool that, uh, that is very commonly used. And the difference, the, they're both share the word map, but the difference is it's focusing on, on the user, on, on the, the customer, their, their motivations, their emotions, their satisfaction. So we're, we're thinking about them as they go through a process. It's a customer activity. But uh, what it isn't doing is it's not uh, looking at what's under the covers and seeing what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, sometimes at those touch points, we, we, we talk about it a little bit, but it's not really what its purpose is. It's, it's for UX designers to think about how a person is feeling through this whole, whole process. So that's why a value stream map map can be uh, really uh, helpful is that it can help us to think about what's happening behind the scenes uh, and not just from a consumer uh, customer perspective. So it's called a value stream map because it's focusing on value. So even though it's talking about an internal process, it's looking from a customer's uh, perspective still what parts of your, this process is creating something of value, which parts don't. So it's, it's focusing on value, but it's really also focusing on waste. So, <laughs> that's one of, one, of my, one of my favorite gifts uh, of all time. So let's talk a moment. We're going to diverge from value stream mapping. It's, it's hard to really do it effectively without really understanding waste. 
Um, so we're going to talk about the eight wastes. So it used to be seven wastes, and now there's a bonus one. So bonus one. yes. So if you're all good, if you're all paying attention, you get to find out what the eighth waste is. All right. So let's talk about the first one: transport. <laughs> <laughs> so we're transporting a material further than necessary. So it's this is this is a waste. Of course, the further than necessary is fa falling off the. There you go. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. So we're thinking. If you're thinking about a factory, uh, you might think of of moving things. Just you've got this this material, and then you've got to put it in the forklift, and you got to move it move it all the way over here uh, to the other side of the warehouse and then when you need it for the next step someone's going back and taking a forklift grabbing it and bringing bringing it all the way back like obviously that that's a waste in transport but when we're not thinking of of the factory floor how can we apply that where can we find transport waste uh, well if we're developing you might think of what degradation of information over time so a designer does a design and hands it off to the developer and there might be some de there might be waste there where information is lost things that the that the designer knew when they were going through it they they have were talking to the clients and they made something they had, they knew how something was going to function but it wasn't transferred uh, to to the developer um, other parts of a process uh, could be where someone has to relearn that what the this person is responsible for process a point a the next person in the process he has to do something similar and he has to relearn something that the person in the beginning process so one one example is I went uh, to uh, um, examine the process of of a company and noticed that everyone had different ways of capturing the same information some had post-it notes on their on their uh, monitors, others had a notepad open, others had digital post post-it notes. So the the software wasn't capturing information that was useful for everyone. So they were going offline and saying, "Hey, I, I need that phone number," and 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 they were capturing it and coming back to it. So that's an example of of transporting information. The next waste is inventory. Uh, when <laughs> when we're creating too much inventory. Uh, than, than what's necessary. So things piling up. Uh, Hiromi's example of, of the grocery store where, where it's, uh, the food's going bad because they're, they're taking, taking in too much. So outside of the factory environment also, uh, files waiting to be, to be worked on, unused records in a database, obsolete files, these kinds of things can, can, um, can, can be inventory waste, that type of waste inventory. Uh, the next one, uh, motion. So you might think of someone who's building a car and they have to they have to, to put in a screw here and then they have to go get the screws and then they have to put it in and they're doing they're, they're walking back and forth and that could be a source of waste. It's adding time and en wasting energy and motion. So you look at that and say, is there something that we can do here to reduce motion? Um, I think of uh, Bruce Lee to all unnecessary motion uh, makes made him more effective. Uh, in real world, where can we see motion? Meetings, right? Unnecessary meetings. Do we have to before we can do anything? Do we all have to get together? Is that really necessary to to be doing this? Is, is this uh, causing problems? Email is is that is that moving of information going around and sitting in someone's inbox and 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 could it be handled in a more streamlined, automate, automated way? So that's motion. The next is waiting. Uh, bottlenecks, uh, <laughs> bottlenecks in a in a factory. You know, someone is sitting around and they're waiting for the person, the next person to, or the person before them to complete their process. So they're just sitting there. That's a huge problem. That would be a huge problem in manufacturing, but. Uh, it can happen in, in the workplace, in business. And, uh, what happens when uh, a client has a request and all of its designers are at a workshop? <laughs> a, 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 a bottleneck there. So uh, that's waiting. Number five is overproduction. 
We could have used those sauces. Uh, yeah, we could have <laughs> used those the other day. <laughs> um, so doing something before it is asked or, or required. So just in case, we would say like, oh, we need stuff like this. We, have to, we just have to have this ready just in case. Would you rather have it just in time? Because it's, that's more efficient. You know, uh, thinking of airlines, they're, they were uh, topping off the tank uh, in, with, with gas uh, for, or fuel for, for their flights, costing millions and millions of dollars of waste because they didn't need it. They, they, had a, they knew exactly how long the flight would be, then they have a certain percentage of time that they have to account for, if, you know, if they have to circle the, uh, the, the airport. So they discovered that they were just, that, that just in case was costing them so much weight and ex wasted fuel. Uh, so that can happen in, in other areas, uh, thinking about uh, data, uh, doing it, when looking at a feature, thinking about all the possible uses of it, how a screen loads, you know, what, how we load information. That could slow down, slow down an experience because we're, we're pulling in more than we actually need for, for the user. Uh, next, over-processing. <laughs> feeling like, you know, it just needs a little more cowbell, right? Um, so adding components to a step that don't meet a requirement. Is a, is a waste. And I'm sure you're all thinking instantly of how that could apply to our work, thinking back to jobs to be done, prioritizing features, uh, guessing on, on what a user needs. Uh, you could be over overdoing, working too hard, wasting your energy and materials and time on, on something that, that isn't actually wanted. Um, designers can have been accused of gold plating and, and wanting to add features uh, or work on something that might not provide as much value to uh, to the user, uh, to the customer, and uh, thinking of a business process, unnecessary checks and balances, uh, just doing too much to make sure something goes out uh, correctly. When something bad happened once, those five whys, maybe overreacting to 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 some to something and putting in too much process, um, and you can see how that can happen on a web form. Too many required fields uh, for a user. That's you're you're getting too much data. If you want someone to sign up and you're asking them for 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 un unnecessary information that wouldn't uh, relate to creating a user account, well, that that's you're over processing and that might end end up in some problems. So you can see how these wastes can apply in, in, in other areas, and then and then oh, directly related to. And car manufacturing so defects and that these are these are obvious uh, uh, that's an obvious waste that you can look for but uh, looking for the most common the most important uh, defects and figuring out where they they come from in our world uh, where can we find defects uh, most a lot of times poor understanding of a user story you know, we, we start uh, start on a feature, developers start on a feature, designers start on a feature, and we don't really understand it, and that could that could lead to, to problems. Um, just having misalignment, uh, lack of lack of uh, uh, capabilities, uh, maybe someone who's not qualified. Like you asked me to, to be an illustrator, you're gonna it's gonna slow down the process because it's gonna take me a long time to make an illustration. Maybe I'll get it done, but but. Uh, that's going to cause a defect in, in the end result too, right? Uh, yeah, what did I do? And then the bonus one, you were all very good. So it, it's skills. This was added. You can see like from the beginning, it was just about like, what can we do to, to make this process better? And then they realized, well, the people on the floor, on the factory floor, they know what, where the inefficiencies are. They, they're the, the boots on the ground. They know that if I just moved this tray, if someone just let me move this tray here, I would have less wasted motion, things like that. So uh, Tesla, Elon Musk uh, reached out to all his employees when they were going through this, this big push to get the Model 3, this big important car, and he said to anyone, come to, here's my, my number, or come to me, I wanna know if you have an idea on how to how to uh, speed things up and, and, and increase our productivity, and reduce waste. So going back to uh, value stream mapping, uh, how do we do that? Keeping keeping those those wastes <laughs> wastes in mind. Why? 
<laughs> okay, so so this is how how we do it. This is so. This is really important. At least one person who's doing this needs to have observed the entire flow themselves. We don't want to call those managers into the room and say, "Okay, tell me about the process." You want to go through and you want to see how those pieces together. Because remember that that cone of of awareness that they they might be thinking of. They might have a big picture idea, but but. It's from their viewpoint. So you want to be going through that whole process. Take me through it. Let me on the factory floor. Uh, let me go to your office and see how this how it goes through through the whole day. Don't rely on documentation. They just hand you a manual and you're like, okay, I'm going to turn this into a value stream map. No, eh, don't do that. Uh, then we have a session uh, with post-it notes. Get get them all together. Put them on a whiteboard and and just get each of those. Uh, those steps together and while you're doing that you're going to be collecting data and these are the kinds of things that that apply to uh, value stream mapping uh, in the traditional sense so you can see that some of them don't apply to what to what we're doing but looking at inventory type and size on for the so you're thinking of this process step and you're thinking of the factory floor what's coming in cycle time so how long does it I mean, this is a cycle cyclical process process so when it comes in front of them what uh, how long does it take to do this one step then uh, change over time so so what uh, just to go from starting over to going back to uh, to the starting point how long does that does that take um, uptime downtime how uh, that's self-explanatory how many people does it take to to do this step uh, how many shifts so again factory floor um, applies there how much are they creating at that at that time the batch size uh, then as you're going through each step you're thinking about that one step in the process uh, and asking these questions uh, is it valuable again from a customer standpoint not from a business standpoint like this is for so we can do checks and balances or we can report for ourselves what value does it create for the customer Second, is it capable? Does, is the result of what's ha coming out of this step is it a high? Is it of high quality? Available? Is it available when it's needed? So, is there downtime? Uh, is there something wrong? Are all the designers at a workshop? But that wouldn't happen in a cyclical process. This is a one-time thing, right? So, uh, ad adequate? Uh, does <laughs> does it uh, the capacity meet the customer's demands? So is, is this one part of the process? Is it capable of uh, pr producing the right amount? And then is it flexible? So can this can this can other work be be incorporated in this in this same step? So you can see how how those things um, can be analyzed. And then so while you're looking at it, because it's a stream map, you're thinking of how everything fits together. You're asking it: Is does it flow well? Where does it stagnate? Yeah, throughout the process, um, where does it slow down? Uh, so we're talking about push versus pull. I'm thinking about uh, does the, as it's flowing through, where does the information go? Where where is what's coming in, what's coming out? Uh, where are the bottlenecks? And then thinking of of this kind of like flow versus stagnation. But but is it? Uh, is the output consistent? Is is this one part? Is this whole flow? Is it sometimes it's really good at at at, at producing a product, and then sometimes it's there's something off, something's lower. So you you're looking for that consistency. So let's look at this. Is uh, after talking about that, this is an example of a very beautiful value stream map. So the value stream maps have <laughs> uh, value stream maps have a, a set iconography and symbols that that are, that are used uh, and those the those jagged lines uh, represent like electronic uh, information uh, the supplier and the customer are represented by those little factories uh, there's this happy dude down down there with his uh, with his uh, flow that involves a person and uh, those triangles represent inventory Piling up, uh, so there there are, uh, there are other symbols that you can. I won't really get into get into all of them. But thinking of the um, 
the anatomy of this. So the top area is capturing the information flow. So this customer has an order, uh, it has a forecast, it's come in, it's sent to the production control, and then they have this weekly uh, PO, purchase order, thank you, uh, going to the supplier, and, and that's, that's the information. And then at the bottom there, there's a production manager, and, and he's, you know, he's watching and, and, and managing all of these different parts of the step. So that's where the information is. Then we have the product flow, which uh, probably self-explanatory, and then the time ladder. And this is really important. Where it's doing is it's, it's uh, you're documenting how long that cycle time is, how long it takes to do the actual step, and then the time between the steps. And um, I'll talk a bit about that that time ladder. So time ladder. I got ahead of myself. I was so excited to tell you about about the time ladder. Um, so that you take all that and then you're you're looking at the cycle time and, and the downtime and figuring out what what here is value added time. What am I what are, is this process what are we working on? How long are we working on things that actually bring value to their customer to our customer? And then when aren't we? And then you, you add all that up and then you can do, there's a formula. I hate math, so I'm not gonna talk about the math. But um, you do a formula and you can say like 30% of our time is spent creating value. The rest of it is not non-value added. So you can see a clear uh, opportunity for, for improvement there. So let's talk about applying, to, applying this to design. Well, we're not gonna go in and say, you know, oh, you want to you want a product? Oh, you're all idiots. You don't know anything about about the the work that really needs to be done. You just let me talk to these to these people on on the ground, and and I'll make you something that's really powerful. No, we want to know about the the goals, the motivations. They have understanding, big picture. So we we should uh, uh, focus on on these these important parts of our important clients and say really focusing on what do they want out of this uh, product. But then, yes, we focus on, on the let us go to the factory floor or whatever and, and let's go through, through the step. And then walk through it and at looking for that waste, uh, asking is it valuable, capable, available, adequate, flexible. Uh, that's, that's where we should be focusing as, as we analyze something in, uh, that we're working on. So how about so here's some story time. I did some work for I do work for a company that does background checks and they had a pro a product uh, or a feature that they need to work on when someone wanted to dispute the results of their background check. So they're trying to get a job, comes back and says, you know, they they went to uh, they're a felon. Okay. So uh, <laughs> and the person says, no, I'm, I, I'm not a felon. Sometimes they want to say, well, I am a felon, but I'm a better person now. And that's, that's real. That's, real. that's not a joke. Like they want to be able to augment it and say, like, I, was, I did that when I was a kid. But a lot of times it's just, I, that, I don't understand what that means. That's, that, I don't know where that came from. That didn't happen to me. So they, legally, they have to support it. So their system... Uh, supported it in a way, but they created a new system and needed to match, so they needed to update it. Um, so we did a user journey, and we're thinking about it from the person, uh, the cut, the user's perspective. They want to dispute it, and as we did it, the whole the whole entire process, as we went every step, it was like frustrated, angry, sad, frustrated. You know, it was it was a low a low. Um, satisfaction process and you know we isolated areas where they might you know feel better about what they're doing and but but really what's happening is they're they're going to the website they're submitting their uh, their dispute and then they wait and then someone calls them and then they and they find out if their dispute is going to be accepted or not uh, or or even investigated but when we went and looked at the processes behind that that didn't involve the the customer or the user uh, we found some interesting interesting things uh, things that they were doing behind behind the scenes and we isolated one key element mm -hmm. is that they were spending a lot of time in their process explaining background checks to 
to their cons to the to the users, and that was I, I don't remember the percentage right now, but but um, there's a large percentage of disputes that aren't necessary, just because they they the, an example is their background check will say sex offender on every single one, but it's just as it's the title, sex offender. This is a sex offender search and not a sex offender. But they would see that and they would I'm gonna I am not a sex offender. <laughs> and they would, they would they would call up and so we I we we figured out that some that they were spending so much time explaining when it didn't when it wasn't necessary. So we said, how can we address this problem? Well what we did was we created on the, the dispute site an area it starts out with before you can do anything, it explains every part of of the background check. And terminology has a glossary, FAQ, they can get to see what it is before they, they submit. So uh, that's one example of, of how we could apply that looking for waste uh, in, in it. So again, those are the waste that, that we're looking at. You can see how just understanding that can help us in, in, our, in our process. Whether or not we're doing a full value stream, we can be thinking about these kinds of things that we can address as a design team. Um, here's an example, though, of, of a very design-focused uh, value stream map. It focuses on time and information and waiting. So this is going to the doctor's office. You can see the, where the value is added, where, you know, going, signing in, going to the front desk, speaking with your doctor, returning to the front desk, th th those, going to the patient room, those, those are all value things. And then, then focusing on that wait time. So doing something like that could be pretty straightforward. Maybe not going fully in and thinking about inventory and, 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 and all those other really uh, useful information in certain circumstances. But instead, um, when you're doing something simple, thinking about those kinds of wastes while, while, isolate, while, while analyzing any flow. Yeah.